Hello everyone, welcome back to the 4Play channel. It's Bella. This is Jace. Before we get into today's video, make sure to leave this video a like. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss whenever we do post a new video. And leave a comment below if you had any questions about this video or any videos that you'd like to see from us in the future. Today's video is going to be all about swinger myths. This is going to be a three-part series and there's going to be seven, seven little myths in every single video. So make sure to look out in the future because we'll have more. And we are going to say if all of these myths are true or false, if there's any reality to it. So basically we're doing a Mythbusters here and telling you is this a myth or is this a truth? So we're going to start with the biggest one, which I would say is the upside down pineapple. Upside down pineapples do represent swingers. This one is a truth for sure. And I mean, I feel like swingers, especially now, really own this. You'll see so many swingers wearing upside down pineapples constantly on clothing, on hats. And it's kind of a fun little way that, let's say that you're walking through a store and you have it on. It's not so obvious. It's one of those things, if you know, you know. So it's a talking point, but it's not like, hey, I'm a swinger. So it's a fun little talking point that, you know, you could recognize on someone. So it's almost like a mascot. I would say for the lifestyle. So that one's very, very true. Now, if people are just wearing pineapples in general, I wouldn't say that that is specifically a swinger. Maybe it is because I have normal pineapple stuff too, but specifically the upside down pineapple is what you're gonna wanna be looking for that is a true thing about swingers. And swingers do love pineapples in general. So, I mean, it's really hard to find upside down pineapple stuff. Unless you go to foreplay.com yeah. slash shop. <laughs> and so whenever you're just out and about, you probably won't see as many completely upside down pineapple stuff unless you're going to a resort or a cruise or specific swinger event. But swingers do love pineapples. We have a ton of pineapple stuff, pineapple decor, pineapple apple to keychains so could be a sign number two are key parties real key parties are not real nowadays so what a key party is is historically they said that swingers would go to a party and then they would put all of their car keys in a bowl at the end of the party you randomly pick a car key and that is who you go home with at the end of the night that is not true so swingers do not have that type of party at least it's not something normal that people in the lifestyle do these days you definitely need to have some kind of connection um, at least know each other and it's not just like a blind pick and choose. That could be something back in the day. It could be something that people maybe do to this day. We can see it working if it was with a group of people that everybody knew and maybe everybody has played with before or maybe everybody wants yeah. to play with each other. And they all play separately. Yeah. There doesn't be so <laughs> much that went into that. I really think it's a fabricated Hollywood thing that this is what swingers did and they just said that you see it in different shows. Like the Grinch had a scene like that. That 70s show had a scene about key parties. So it was really big in media. So it's kind of true, but kind of false. More, More so false. false. Number three is that everyone has sex with everyone. This is totally false. That is not what swinging is about. Yes, there is, I mean, that those things happen, but play is not the end goal, at least for most swingers. I would say that the end goal is to have fun with your partner. And if you happen to, you know, play, that's just a little bonus that's fun, but it's all about that connection and building your trust and your communication and just your love with your partner. And so we always go into everything just saying, hey, we're gonna have fun with each other. If you know stuff happens to happen, you know, that's fun too. But it's all about having fun with your partner. So the thought that everyone goes in and just plays with everybody is just not a true thing at all. Now, I'm sure there's groups of friends, you know, and everyone will go and play with every one of those friend groups. But if you go to a club or you go to a bigger party, anything like that, you're not gonna see people just playing with everybody. You can gladly walk around. You don't have to be bothered. You don't have to participate, nothing like that. So the thought that everyone plays with everybody, definitely a big false. Consent is the number one thing in the lifestyle, consent and respect. Nobody goes in and just has sex every single person there's always asking sometimes in the playrooms you'll see people invite people in or maybe somebody will ask if they can join that's normal but there's always a consent thing first and it's not just expected that everybody plays number four swingers have more stis this is false people in open relationships people in the swinging lifestyle people who are more sexually open in general are a lot more safe with their sexual health. We feel like from us personally and most of the people we meet, people take that sexual health very seriously and get tested more regularly. Whereas a lot of people in vanilla relationships are just going out and doing the hookup culture, don't get tested as often. 
And so because of more regular testing, for that reason, swingers are more safe. Also protection is a must for most couples in the lifestyle. And usually if protection is thing that they're not doing, it's couples that have been tested together and they only do that with certain couples. So protection is also very, very, very highly used and a number one rule for most couples in the lifestyle. And so that's another reason that the swinging lifestyle takes everything so seriously and takes sexual health so seriously. So the idea that you know, swingers have more STIs is also just very, very false. Protection is expected in the lifestyle. It's very rare that we hear of a couple or see a couple not using any protection at all, again, unless mm -hmm. they've talked about it beforehand. Whereas in normal hookup culture, vanilla hookup culture, it's less common to find people who do use condoms all the time. Myth number five, swinging is cheating. This one is a big false. Now, obviously you could cheat in swinging. If you break a rule and you go do something you're not supposed to do, hey, it's cheating. But this is ethical non-monogamy that we're talking about here. This is consensual. This is you and your partner talking about doing something together with another people that are also consensually doing this. And so there's no cheating in that. We are doing this together as adults. And this is something that we enjoy in our relationship. There's something that we, you know, benefit from because it helps us grow and it helps our communication, our connection. And it's something that we don't need, but it's something that is fun for us to do together. So since it's all consensual, doing it with consensual adults, it's not cheating. Cheating requires deceit and cheating requires lying. Within the swinging lifestyle, there is so much communication that is also the top thing. You wanna make sure there's consent, make sure there's communication. And if everybody knows what's going on and everyone's okay with it, how could it be cheating? And how could you be cheating if you're literally doing it with another person and your partner is right there in the same room doing it with another person too? <laughs> Myth number six, all women in the lifestyle are bisexual. This is false. We will say a lot of women in the lifestyle are bisexual, but not everybody. So you cannot expect and you cannot assume that all women in the lifestyle are bi. That is a stigma that we think needs to be broken. It doesn't matter if even a large majority of women are bi. It's something that should be asked and talked about and make sure that everyone is comfortable before you know people just start assuming that women are bi. Number seven, swingers try to convert vanilla people. For the most part, this is false. A lot of people in the lifestyle are going to be going to lifestyle events, lifestyle places to make stuff like this happen and to make these connections happen. There are some people in the lifestyle who do go and like going to vanilla places and meeting people there, but it's not common. We also have noticed that most people that are a little bit more in the lifestyle, you know, they don't want to deal with the headache of couples that aren't communicating and aren't talking. And lots of time with vanilla couples that are not ready to swing, they obviously would not have had those connections and had those communications and had those talks about being ready for that. So a lot of swingers, I feel like wouldn't want to do stuff with vanilla couples, especially just because they wouldn't want to deal with the headache of maybe people getting upset in the middle of a play session because things haven't been talked about. Now, like Bella said, there is some people that look for that, but I would say the most common thing when it maybe was coming to vanilla is a couple doing something with a vanilla girl or a vanilla guy where it's a single person where they're not in that relationship dynamic. And so that happens on time to time that we've heard about, but for the most part, this is not true. Most people in the lifestyle also make connections online and these are on swinger dating websites or if they're on a normal dating app, they'll usually put that they are E&M or they'll put a pineapple so the people know that they are ethically non-monogamous. We're also going to go over two bonus myths. So this first one is that swingers make bad parents. This is absolutely false. Most swingers that we know are parents and most of them are amazing parents. I'm sure there's gonna be the rare person that's a bad parent, but that's gonna happen in vanilla relationships too. So yes, there will be bad swinger parents, but they would have been bad vanilla parents as well. It has nothing to do with the swinging aspect that makes them bad. Actually, most swingers have the ability to communicate and more in touch with their emotions, which are a lot of qualities that we believe would make a good parent. And so all of our friends who have kids, they're great parents and they balance their relationship with their child and their relationship with themselves. And they make sure that they're still doing stuff for their own relationship and still making sure to take care of their child. So no, swingers don't make bad parents. 
And if they would have made a bad parent and they're a swinger, they would have made bad parents if they were vanilla. Last one is a queen of spades means that you are looking for BBC. This is true. This could be wearing a anklet that has a little queen of spades charm on it. It could be a necklace. Maybe they'll wear clothes with it. Again, you'll typically won't see this that much just out in normal vanilla life, but at play parties and stuff, you might see it more often. So that was part one of Swinger Myths, Myth Busted, Exposed, whatever you want to call it. There's going to be two more parts to this. These are really fun videos. I think they're fun to film. And hope you guys got some information that helps you realize, hey, swingers do wear upside down apples. And no, they don't cheat. So hopefully this information has helped you guys learn something and hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a like. It helps out a ton. Subscribe to Numbers We Post a video. And then if you guys have any questions about this or any comments, drop those down below. And we will talk to you guys in the next one.